Hey, what's up guys? BJ Dell back with a new video for 2019. How about that? It's a new year already. Hope you guys had a good holiday season and a good new year. Uh, as for me this year, my main goal is to bring you guys a ton of new content. So help with that. Got a new lighting system, got a new camera. New mic came last year, so hopefully everything is top-notch quality-wise from here on out. But for today, we're going to be talking about the iOS app called Vintage Logo Creator and Maker available on the Apple iTunes App Store. Uh, it's $2.99. It's a, definitely a budget app. It's not going to replace Photoshop or anything like that. But if you are on a budget or you've got an iPad or an iPhone looking to do designs on the go, it is a good alternative. So I'm going to walk you through all the tips and tricks, every single tool that you can use, and everything from the ground up. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, so let's go ahead and hop into it. Let's go ahead and hit the uh, Vintage Logo Maker and Creator app. Now, this is an iOS app, uh, so it's available through the Apple App Store. It's $2.99 and works on uh, the whole range of iOS devices. So uh, you can use it on iPads. I'm using the Pro today. You can use it on regular iPads, uh, even the iPhone it's going to work on, which gives you a few different options. Uh, you'll see today I'm using the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Uh, you can use this on any of the iPads. So you don't necessarily have to invest in a Pro. I'm actually not even going to use the Apple Pencil today. I'm um, just using my fingers. You don't really get a lot uh, extra out of using the pencil. So pretty much you can use this with whatever you've got as long as it's an Apple device. Uh, makes it nice to being able to use it on the phone. So if you need a mobile solution, something on the go to where you don't have to lug around uh, something with you and just want to make something on the fly, kind of comes in handy. So, so $2.99 on the App Store. Um, that gets you the basic program. Of course, with a lot of these apps, uh, there's actually in-app purchases that you can make. Vintage Pro is one of those here. You'll see there's weekly updates to this. They, they do new templates that you can use. Uh, there's also new design elements that they add. Uh, so for that, we'll go up here to the cart and I'll show you the prices. So Vintage Pro is a monthly subscription. You get uh, a free three-day trial if you want to start out. Monthly, it's $4.99 or else you can pay for a full year for $29.99. Uh, I personally, I don't do that. Um, I already subscribe to, you know, Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. Uh, you get a lot more out of, you know, using Illustrator and Photoshop. Uh, this is just one of those kind of lightweight alternatives. Uh, those are kind of over your head and you don't want to invest as much into uh, doing the stuff. You know, this is a good alternative for you. Uh, kind of, I guess, play it by ear and see what you think of the program. Uh, if you really want to pay the $4.99 or the $29.99, see if it's a good investment. The other option is, I'll go here, you'll see they have these, what they call bundles of graphics. There's background graphic packs, badges packs, and you can download these. I've actually downloaded, I think, almost all these. I've gotten them on sale throughout uh, having this app. So that's something that you can do too if you don't want everything and you're not going to use everything. You can just get those as uh, you kind of need them. They've got them divided down into to pretty easy to, to manage. Uh, you know bundles so that's an option but as we go through this and you see stuff pop up on the screen as far as when I show you stuff um, buying this for the $2.99 you might not have access to everything you're gonna see on here so keep that in mind so let's go ahead and hop in we're gonna make a new canvas so we're gonna go up here and press the plus button this gives you a recents gives you screen sizes there's even social media presets if you're using it for that and then print sizes and then you have the option for the custom uh, so I know a lot of people are, are here because of like the merch by Amazon stuff. So in that case, we're just going to do the basic 4,500 by 5,400 canvas size. Of course, the bigger, the better. This is a raster based program. It does not work in vectors. So, uh, you know, anything that you have is going to be that, uh, raster based. So you want as big as you can. So it's going to, you know, turn out good. That's why we can start out with the actual canvas size that, that merch by Amazon needs. So if you're making, you know, posters and, and, invitations stuff like that you might want to do even bigger because it does allow you to go up higher so um, you'll see this is pretty streamlined not a lot of menus you don't have a lot of clutter on either side of the screen if you're used to procreate there's a few different things to keep in mind number one the pinch to zoom there is no pinch to zoom on the canvas itself uh, the pinch to zoom only works on the graphic elements that we're going to add to this 
it's how you resize those but the canvas itself does not move like that so keep that in mind also the two finger uh, back button that does not work on here uh, so you actually have the undo and redo arrows up here so that's one thing to kind of get, get yourself used to once you get started in here um, and then down here we have the main menu you'll see there's background badge decoration text edit and overlay kind of go through those quickly and uh, let you know what each one does so first one is background um, with this, honestly, if you're using uh, this app for t-shirt design, you're not going to want to use the background option that much. Uh, t-shirt designs, you want that uh, transparent background and using stuff like this is not going to look that great because it's going to be, you know, that rectangle on the shirt. Uh, so if you're using this for the other stuff like posters or imitations, that might be something that, that you look into. But for right now, we're going to skip that because it's, it's not really going to be used that much. Next one is badge. Now you'll see these are kind of nice because they group them into uh, these kind of subcategories instead of just having a huge, you know, screen of everything available. You can select from vintage circles, vintage shapes, frames, ornamental frames, circles, uh, the list goes on and on. You'll see it's numbered as far as how many uh, designs are contained in each of those. Also up here, you can add things to favorites and you can even import from your photo library. So if you've got commercial uh, rights usage to certain designs on your photo roll, you want to use those, you can actually import them into here. So that is very, very cool. Um, and then the next one down here is decoration. So with decoration, these are going to be more clip art design elements. Uh, you've got ornaments, ribbons, hearts, uh, nautical themes, animals. Let's just click on animals and I'll show you here. So you've got all different types of animals on here. I'll just pull up one. Let's do this chicken. So one thing to keep in mind, uh, the developers of this app have stated that all these clip art images, they are good for uh, commercial rights usage. So if you're going to put this on uh, something to sell, you're good to go. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is uh, they say that you have to add something artistic uh, to the, the design itself. So in this instance, you can't just take this chicken, slap it on a t-shirt without doing anything to it. Uh, they said it needs to be, uh, you know, something that takes time and that has artistic integrity to it. Uh, they don't want you to use just the image by itself and, and call it a day for the design. So, you know, changing colors, adding elements to it, adding text, anything like that is going to allow you to use this, uh, in a commercial space. Now, that does not go for text, so we're going to go ahead and select this chicken and hit this trash can to delete it out of here. Now, the text, when you bring this up, uh, got all these different fonts that you can use here. With the fonts, these are not all available for com commercial use. So in the description of this video, I'm going to put a link, and I kind of touched on this in one of the previous descriptions of another video that I did about adding text to Procreate. Um, the developers of this app actually have a list on their website. They break it down. They tell you exactly these are the fonts in this app for personal use. These are the fonts that are in this app for commercial use. So before you do anything as far as making designs and putting them up on any platform to sell, you're going to want to hop on that website and actually check them out, see which ones you're able to use. Now, if you find something in there that you absolutely love that's labeled uh, for personal use, if you track down the actual font um, and the company that makes that font and buy a license for it, you can go ahead and use that uh, font in this app as long as you have a license for it. Otherwise, stay away for, from it. If you want to use it you know, on a, a personal poster that you're going to put up on your wall, it's cool, but uh, just cannot do it for commercial usage. So uh, those are the fonts um, that are available. And then the rest of the menu down here, we have edit and then the overlay. So let's go ahead and kind of show you some of the options that you can do with this edit. So let's go back to this badge. Uh, we're going to go to circles here and let's well, actually, let's get something a little bit more. Uh, let's see a little bit more complicated. Right, this one will be a, a good one here. All right. So the circle we've got loaded in. See, the first thing you can do is actually click down here and you can change the colors of the image that's on the screen and selected. So we're going to go ahead and make it black so you can see it here. And then we're going to go ahead and add in one more. I just want to show you here. Okay. 
Now, you'll notice up here, there are no layer menus. If you're used to uh, Procreate or even, you know, using Photoshop or Illustrator, uh, you're used to the layer menus and, and telling, you know, where everything sits in the layer hierarchy. So with this, it does not have that to select a layer. You actually just tap on a layer and then that's selected. So you can change this one. If you want to go to this layer, you tap that and then change that. That's how the layers are selected. Um, let's go ahead and move this one. All right. To control the order of how layers go are these buttons right here. You'll see the two rectangles with the arrows. So this one is going to drop whatever selected layer you have behind the other layers. If you have more, you just keep hitting it over and over again until it goes to the back. And then this one's gonna bring it to the front. So uh, keep that in mind as you get more and more layers, especially when they're stacked, it's very hard uh, because you know if you're wanting to select a layer and this layer's you know this has got something on top of this layer well you can't select that one underneath it because it's going to select this top one so you have to kind of manage where everything sits with these you're going to become very good very quick at adjusting uh the order of the layers so you can actually get to things and move them around so keep that in mind but let's go ahead and delete that one out now that we talked about that okay back to this this uh circle here as you move it around uh, the first thing you might notice is you've got this yellow line so that's going to show you when it's centered um and then this is going to show you the vertical center there. So this is kind of nice because you can keep track of if the image is centered. Um, not necessarily do you always want, if you're doing t-shirts, the, the image centered. You would want it set in further to the top. But at least here you know it's in the middle horizontally. Uh, the vertical you might not use that much. But just kind of keep that in mind. So uh, now that we've got that, let's go ahead and show you the edit menu. I'm going to go down here. First thing you'll see here is the fine tune button. Basically what this does is it's the same thing as moving it around with your fingers, but it's more of a nudge. So you can kind of fine tune exactly where it's at, left, right, up and down. This button here is going to let you scale larger or scale smaller while keeping the same uh, aspect ratio. This button down here is going to recenter your design horizontally and vertically. And then this button over here, of course, rotate counterclockwise. And then the one next to it is clockwise. There we go. So that's the, the fine tune menu there. As you see, there's a reset button too, so we can bring it back to where it initially was. Next one up past that is shadow. Now this is gonna add a shadow underneath. Um, of course, if you're using this app for t-shirt design, shadow is not something that you're necessarily gonna want to use. Um, it, it's not going to come in that handy that often. Uh, this slider here allows you to blur and then it's also going to kind of change the opacity of it as well. Um, I teach a local graphic design class here in town and you know one of the the key things that I try to tell the students is just because you know how to do something or can do something doesn't always mean that you should do something in graphic design. Um, really keeping it simple is better uh, just because I can add, you know, all these effects and, and do all these colors and these crazy things to the designs. A lot of times, uh, you know, the, the simpler, the better. It's going to sell better. It's going to read better. Um, when you get it, too many things going on at once, it really clutters the design. Uh, and this, this is a good way to, you know, kind of keep it simple is by not using stuff like this. So we'll go ahead and click back out of this and trash that. So just know uh, if you're using this for, you know, poster design or imitation design, you can always use the shadow if you, if you want to, if the design calls for it. Uh, same thing with overlay. This is going to allow you to add some funky textures to your designs. Um, sometimes a design will call for this, sometimes not. Uh, when I'm making designs, honestly, I don't use the overlay option here in uh, this app. I will bring everything into Procreate and do it that way. Uh, I do have another tutorial up on YouTube that shows how to add distressed effects in Procreate. I find that way works a little bit better, especially with uh, DTG printing. So if you haven't checked that one out yet, hop on over after this video and check that out. But it is something that you can use in this app if you don't have Procreate, if you don't want to learn you know, a second app and don't want to jump back and forth between apps. So let's go back into our edit menu here. Well, let's trash that overlay. And then of course you can adjust the, the contrast here as well, but let's go ahead and trash that for now. 
Uh, so we're going to go back here. Uh, next one is stretch. This basically lets you distort um, and stretch the image. Uh, the other one let you keep that same aspect ratio, but this one you can really make it wonky and kind of uh, play with you know how it looks. So there you see, I just did the double tap because I'm so used to it. Oh, all right, so let's go ahead and go back here. All right, go back into edit. So I'm gonna select edit. Uh, opacity, same thing, opacity with DTG printing. If you're doing merch by Amazon or Redbubble or anything like that, uh, opacity does not print well with DTG. So leave the opacity alone. If you're using this for something else, feel free to play around with it. Uh, flip is, you're not going to be able to see here unless we do this. It's going to be horizontal flip. Oh. Uh, let's see. Why is this not working? There we go. These flips are not working. It's really weird. Usually this is a horizontal and vertical flip. I'm not sure why it's doing this. I've never had it do that before, but it gives you an idea if you you know want to flip it horizontally or uh, vertically. That's what that's for. But since it's not working, we'll just leave it alone. All right. So there we go. Get the center back in. All right. So that's pretty much all the uh, edit options. Uh, of course, you can duplicate if you need to make another one. It's going to make it the exact same size, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then you can adjust it from there if you need to. Or you can also lock the layer. Uh, what that's going to do is uh, you're not going to be able to move this whatsoever. So if you're rearranging a bunch of stuff at once uh, and you want to make sure that your you know, background image or that first image stays exactly where it's at, lock it. You're not going to be able to move it. And that'll help you manage these layers up here and make it a little bit easier since there's not that menu. So let's go ahead and kick it back here and unlock that. All right, so it's unlocked. Um, let's go ahead and delete this one out. Oh, that's another thing too, that's kind of cool. Um, so if you're wanting to change the image that you've got here, really cool thing, instead of going back and deleting it and, and everything else, just click on it here and it brings up the same folder that you were in the vintage circles and you can actually just change it out this way instead of having to go back in and add in uh, a new one you can just do it like that uh, this makes it nice too because it keeps it in that exact same position so if you've already kind of got a design going and you know okay I'm, I'm good with this design and this is kind of what I want to use but I just want to change that one uh, you know, particular image in there, you can do that and it's not going to make you start all over, um, you know, recentering it and resizing it. It's going to keep that, that same size. So go ahead and clear that out. All right. So, uh, let's see, going to decoration, honestly, with this, um, the decorations, the edit menu here, it does exactly the same thing here. Now that the flips working, I can show you that it kind of moves that around so uh does the exact same thing as the badge so we're not going to go back into that because it's the exact same text is a little bit different though so let's go ahead and fire that up um let's go ahead and just put this is a test all right oops all right there we go so uh test or the text works just the same as uh the badges and the decorations change the uh, the color of the text down here if you're wanting to change the font you can actually do it on the fly which is kind of cool because if you've got a design going on you just need to see real quick okay what's going to look the best you can just get a really quick uh, kind of visual representation of, of what this is with not a lot of fuss so uh, the fuss is going to come with when you actually need to go to that website and see okay can i use this commercially or is this for personal use only just do not forget about that uh get you in a lot of trouble so uh, that's how you change the color now let's go ahead and go into the edit menu on the text and show you here um fine tunes the same as well as reset but text you actually get the option to curve so this is going to add a curve to the text and the slider here lets you control how much of a curve you get so this is kind of cool because you know if you have a, a circle design you want to wrap the text around the circle um the only thing with that it's a little bit different if you can use uh you know photoshop or illustrator because you can uh you know wrap the uh, text to a path and do it that way it's going to be a lot easier and it's going to look uh more natural uh this you've got to play around a lot with to get it to look just right 
but uh, that's an option. Also, you'll see when you do this, this is kind of close and it's kind of hard to read. So when you hit distance here, this is basically the kerning and it's going to space those words out. So you can see the more spaced out they get, the smaller uh, the text is. So you might have to resize it up a little bit. But you can see it makes it a lot more readable by adjusting that kerning, which is kind of cool. So uh, that's the option there. If you're doing vertical text, you also have the vertical spacing on there as well. Not an option right now is grayed out since we have the horizontal text, but that gives you an idea. So let's go ahead and kick this back. This is straight. All right. Next one up is outline. This is going to allow you to add a stroke around the text. This top one, um, oh, let's switch colors so you can see this. Top one is the size of the stroke, and then the bottom one is the opacity for the stroke. Uh, of course, with this, like I said before, the opacity, leave it alone. Keep it always up to the far right if you're doing uh, t-shirt designs. Uh, if you're not, you know, you can play with it. But the uh, the one you really want to focus on here, if you use it, is just the, uh, the size of the stroke here. Uh, getting something that looks good for your design. So let's go ahead and trash that one so we've got it back to normal. Of course, you got shadow, and you know my thoughts on that. We already discussed that. Uh, we've also got overlay, um, which once again, you can add this overlay, but a lot of times it's not really going to look that good, and it's not going to print out right, so just be careful. I uh, kind of want to blow this up so you can see. You can kind of see how pixelated this is, and it just doesn't really look good. The contrast here, the, the slider here, basically adjusts the, the contrast of the, the overlay and uh, how much saturation you get out of it but um i know on certain ones of these you, it'll actually go outside of the letters and the higher you go it just looks really bad so um like i said i would just really just use procreate if you need to to do any uh, effects like that so all right so we did overlay opacity once again and then your flip um this obviously with text you're not going to use a lot maybe if the design calls for like a mirror image um that's not gonna happen a whole lot but it's there if you need it so let's go ahead and kick this back all right yeah, and that's pretty much it as far as the uh, the bottom menu goes um other things up here if you let's see here let's close yeah. let's trash this one Let's go ahead and add just a couple of badges in here. I'll do a badge here and uh, let's do a flower in here. All right. So these are two separate layers right now. You do have the option of temporarily grouping the layers. Uh, that's what this little kind of chain link is up here. If you tap that and then select multiple layers just by tapping on them, you'll see there's a yellow dotted marquee that goes around them. It's probably hard to see in this video. It's hard to see just looking at it right now but once you have both of them selected you can move them around uh it's going to let you resize them together and then once you're done you can unlink unlink them again with that and then they're going to be able to be moved again separately so um that comes in pretty handy uh especially when you're adjusting the layers and stuff it's it's basically just a, a grouping option like you would have in in photoshop or procreate so let's go ahead and clear this out so now that we're done with that let's go ahead and just make a quick design um let's see let's just do it like a dad design um do vintage circles kind of cool banner here i'm going to change this to black so you can see it better i would usually do it white so we can put it on a dark color t-shirt but just uh for the sake of this and being able to see it we'll go black so uh there's that there and let's add some more decorations in here um ornaments do some stars change those to black flip them around yeah, looks pretty good there and let's go ahead and edit those we'll duplicate those because I want to move them to the other side so we'll duplicate and then let's flip those horizontally oh there we go all right now the cool thing here is too you'll see they they know that you duplicated this so oh, let's get back here so when you move this it'll actually lock it in so you know that it's on uh the same uh scale as this one so we're kind of evened up there and it's lined up makes it kind of nice instead of trying to eyeball it you know it's it's lined up it gives you that kind of magnetic lock option 
um, that Procreate has too as an option. So we've got that. Um, let's go ahead and add some text. Uh, let's see. Let's just do dad. Put this in the center here. And when you want to add more text, you just click the uh, text button again, and that gives you another text layer. Oops. I'm sorry. I'll hit text again here. And then hit that. There we go. Things greatest. And change this text there. All right. One thing you can do too, you've got the star button up here. Um, it's not something that I've done yet because I don't use this app that often. But um, if you wanted to take, you know, half an hour or an hour and sit down with that website, uh, the developer, and go through and just star all of the uh, commercial uh, fonts down here, you could do that and then you wouldn't have to look them up. Um, I just thought of that right now. And it's not something that I've done before. Like I said, I don't use this that often. Um, the students that I teach are all different skill levels, so this is one app that I've kind of got some of them into. Uh, just if they're not as good with a Photoshop or Illustrator, it's a lot easier for them to catch on to this. So uh, let's go ahead and I got that changed. Let's edit this and do a curve here. We'll shrink this down. You'll see that it doesn't go exact. It's really hard to get it exact with this. That's why they said Photoshop is so much nicer doing, uh, you know, text on paths. It just looks better. But let's go ahead and use that. And at the bottom, let's just go ahead and put uh, 2019 just to fill in that bottom banner. And we're going to edit that. Spread the distance out a little bit and then add a curve to it. And you'll see with numbers especially or anything with not a lot of uh, characters to it, it's harder to get a better uh, curve to it just because there's not as much to work with. Let's spread it out just a little bit more here. There we go. It looks a little, a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So now from here, what I could do is, uh, like I said, I'm just doing the black because it's easy to read on the screen. But if I wanted to change everything to white, I could go through each individual one and change them to white. Or I could go to that link button again and click the dad, click the stars, click the stars, and then click the text here, text here, and then the banners, and then just hit white. And it's going to change everything to white all at once, which is really cool. So, And then once we're done with that, the last thing that we need to do is actually get it out of the program. So we are done here. Let's go ahead and unlink everything. If you hit this up arrow, it's going to give you the option to export as PNG. So just do that. It's going to save it to your camera roll and you're good to go to upload. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, let me know in the comments too, what's your go-to app? Have you ever used this app? What do you think of it? Are you going to use it from here on out? What do you think? Let me know. Uh, as for me, I can be found online at bjdell.com as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell. So until next time, keep creating.